Hello everyone, it's Yvonne here to do the weekly reading for Libra. Okay, Libra, let's see what's going on for you. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. We're going to use the Romantic Tarot for your reading. Um, if the reading resonates with you, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps to grow the channel. Uh, if the reading doesn't resonate with you, then do yourself a favour. Check out other aspects of your natal chart. Your sun sign is not the only sign you have. Um, depending on the times in astrology, one of the other aspects of your natal chart can resonate with you. Okay, so Spirit's saying to you, you need to be more spontaneous. You need to take more risks. You're too limited. You're limiting yourself by not taking risks and not being spontaneous. Don't be stuck. That comfort zone is a great place to be, but it doesn't it doesn't open your world for you. All right. Okay, so we have the Oh, Hierophant coming out here, which I think came out in one of the readings this morning. So we're sort of on a bit of a theme at the moment. Um, the Hierophant is a card that talks about the more practical, spiritual, traditional side of life. Um, the High Priestess sort of talks, because this is the High Priest. The High Priestess talks about inner spirituality, the feminine aspects of spirituality, intuition those sort of things. The Hierophant is more about the practical, traditional stuff. So being the masculine energy, it's more about, you know, structures, churches, those sort of things. Now we have the Ten of Wands coming through here. Oh my goodness, this is so the theme that was in the What's Cracking or the bonus read. Very much about letting go here. With the Ten of Wands, we're putting down a burden. We're letting go of a burden. We're letting go of something here that has held us back. Could be for some of you a marriage or a relationship here, but something is holding you back and you're about to put it down here with this Ten of Wands. Uh, that's why they were saying be, be spontaneous, get outside of your comfort zone. You may be stuck in something here, some way of thinking, some way of doing, some sort of tradition that needs to be let go of. Okay, so we have the Two of Cups coming through. So for some of you, this may have to do with some sort of re relationship or it may be something to do with relationships in general. Um, let's just keep going. All right, Five of Pentacles. Now the Five of Pentacles can be about feeling flat, low or, or even somewhat depressed here. Let me just keep going. I feel like there's something that I'm missing here. Two of Pentacles. There seems to be some sort of balance that needs to be brought in here. And we have the Five of Cups. Some way of thinking about relationships here. Nine of, nine of Wands coming through. Boundaries. Something, let me just get into this energy a little bit more. There's some, some way of thinking about relationships or love that keeps you bound in some sort of traditional idea, thought or belief that you've been told. It's like you've been trapped by a way of thinking and it's limited your options here or limited your opportunities because you've been trapped in a certain way of thinking about them rather than taking risks and I'll see how that goes very interesting energy though all right we have the nine of pentacles coming through here which is very much the card of feeling independent self-sufficient I'm trying to get the energy of where this belongs here with love because there's some connection here for some of you around traditional ideas of relationships and ideas of being independent. So I'm just trying to see where this fits here. 
feel like there's something coming through here that people need to hear. All right, so we have the end of a cycle here with the world card. I feel like for some of you here, this is about the end of being independent and self-sufficient on your own. There's some sort of understanding here that you need to have around being able to be independent and self-sufficient within a relationship. So I feel that many of you I'm talking to have learned that the only way you can make something work within a relationship is by becoming the relationship, but not staying true to who you are. This is about wanting or needing a relationship to show you or prove to you who you are. And it's not necessary. You can still be who you are within the relationship or outside of a relationship, but understanding that doesn't change. You still need to be true to you. A relationship doesn't change you, or it shouldn't. If a relationship changes you, then it's becoming toxic. Okay, let me just get into this a bit more. All right, so we have here the chariot card. You may be dealing with a Cancer or a Pisces here. There is forward movement here after a period of stagnancy and I feel like some of you are about to get an opportunity to move into a relationship. Now, some of you have been in relationships before that have not served you well because you've changed who you were to help a relationship work. Now, for some of you, that's about avoiding conflict, about not speaking up for yourself, not being vocal about what you want in a relationship so you always allow the other person to have their way do what they need to do go where they want to go that type of thing and the universe is saying here you've had or you will have some sort of indication or an enlightenment about this here because you are moving forward in a very different way so you're being given an opportunity for a new relationship here but the warning here is do not lose yourself within this relationship as you've done before. This is different. You've got to learn this time how to be yourself in a relationship. Very good. All right. So we have the offer coming through with the Knight of Wands here. Don't make judgments. Okay. So then we have the Four of Swords. Think and contemplate what you're doing here. You have this strength card coming through. You could be dealing with someone who's got a lot of Leo in their chart. This is about you understanding that you have power in a relationship as well. You matter within the relationship. It's not always about the other person. I think that some of us get into situations where we put other people up on pedestals and we think that they're so amazing that we avoid any sort of conflict or any sort of disagreements because we don't want to mess up the relationship. But actually, that is what messes up the relationship. The speaking out, the standing up for yourself, the talking about what you want keeps the relationship very equal and even. And this is what you're being asked to remember. You can be yourself within a relationship. You do not have to change yourself to be in a relationship. It will just become really difficult. All right, so we have the card of the lovers coming through. So there's some sort of choice here with the king of wands. That's the emperor. Some sort of choice here with an emperor figure. I feel like whoever's coming in here is very used to having control. I feel like you're about to meet someone who is very used to taking control, who needs control in a relationship. And you're being asked here to remember who you are to stand up for yourself and make decisions around what do you want in a relationship. Because I feel here, especially with the lover's card and the emperor, could be dealing with Gemini or Aries here. There is a very strong feeling here that this is a choice for you. Do you want this? Do you want someone to be in control or do you want an equal partnership? So there's some sort of choice here. I think you're going to be delivered someone who's used to getting their own way. 
So you have to now work out how do I work with this energy and still stay true to who I am. Okay, so we have the Eight of Swords coming through here. I just want to clarify this because you're in your head here. So I want to give you some little answers here. Some sort of traditional belief, and I feel like this is what you're putting down, and your traditional belief may be that you're inferior or less superior than your person. Maybe you've been brought up with this religious idea that men are more revered or more um, in charge or more important. Because religion in every religion pretty much every religion. I know that there are probably things like Buddhism and Baha'i where both people are even. But many of the other religions show this energy of men being more revered or more respected than women. And of course, it was probably right for the time of the teachings, but now we've learned to understand that people are equal regardless. That's what we have to learn in life. It's what we're learning on the planet. That's why it becomes so uncomfortable for us when we see people do something that we've been taught that, that we don't feel is right. So there is some sort of energy here with this two of cups around relationships. And sort of with this five of pentacles, I feel that you've had disappointments in relationships before. There's some sort of choice here, some sort of balance you have to understand, especially with this five of cups and this nine of wands. This is boundaries. This is having strong boundaries and saying you can't do that within a relationship. You can't treat me that way. You, you know, you can't think that it's always all about you. This should be a decision we make together that's best for both of us. Very, very interesting here with the whole traditional beliefs. So I'm wondering how many of you out there still feel that a relationship means you have to change who you are. A relationship means that when you go into it, someone is more important than the other person. And this may not always be men. Sometimes it can be women who are very dominant and men who get sort of trodden on a little bit. It doesn't always have to be that way around. But there's some traditional idea here you've got stuck in. You may have had, oh, look at this, the Ace of Cups coming out here. You're being offered true love here. You have to look after it in the way that it needs to be tended. Some of you have been, may have been raised by a very dominant mother. And you may believe that because you saw how your mother treated your father. So maybe you believe that's the way you need to be in a relationship now. But it's saying here that you have to disregard those traditional beliefs if you want to have a healthy relationship. Okay, Eight of Swords coming through here. There's love coming in. You're being offered true love here. You're being offered the relationship, the experience of a lifetime here. But in order to make it work, you have to give yourself consideration and stay true to who you are. All right, we have the Death card coming through here. Oh, followed by the Four of Wands. Death of the old, bring in the new. And the Seven of Cups, dreams coming true here. Dreams coming true. Beautiful. Okay, the offer comes in from a Knight of Pentacles. So somebody moving very slowly who's moved away from another situation here. So you've got someone coming in for you who's about to offer you love here. But in order for you to accept this relationship or to do the best you can with this relationship, you have to understand how to be yourself within the relationship. All right, we'll read a star seed oracle for this one. I'm going to stay true to you, otherwise this will not work. So for some of you, this may be a matter of um, just understanding who you are. Not changing for someone, not adapting to someone. Well, not in an unhealthy way. I guess there's some adaptation that needs to be, uh, you know, obviously acknowledged. Like who gets to use the bathroom in the morning? Um, you actually have got two cards coming through here, so I'm going to read both of them. We have whale and orca elders. Share your song, frequency of sound, diving deep. Whale and orca elders. Mm -hmm. 
The whale and orca elders are benevolent cosmic beings here to anchor a frequency of love onto the planet. To harmonize it with their song, as they weave around the oceans, they do so much more than any of us know. Their physical presence affects Earth's magnetic field and harmonics call us to wake up and remember our own soul song. Looking into the eye of a whale is something you'll never forget. Whales see into your very being in an instant you know you've changed forever. They see beyond the physical, the wounded, the identity, the personality, the story. They see right into your soul. If you pull this card, you're being called to surrender to your deepest truth and share it with potency. To bow to who you truly are. To stretch your heart wide enough to hold it all. To leave your fears, doubts and baggage at the door. To question any part of you that doesn't feel good enough. The whale and orca, orca elders want you to give others the privilege of seeing who you truly are. See, this is what it's about. Allowing someone to see who you are rather than pretending to be somebody you're not. And for you to see the same in other beings. To drop your hang-ups and personality flaws and get busy revealing the unique note your soul came here to sing. Allow the song that echoes in the four chambers of your heart to emanate in all four directions. Peel back the layers of suffering and pain and reveal to others your soul's true song and endeavour to see the soul of all of those you meet. Now the other card I've got here is called Wait. I don't even think I've read this one before, so I'm quite interested with this one. I knew my alphabet, I'd probably find it quicker, but apparently I've gone in the wrong direction. <laughs> ah dear, here it is. Oh, and then I fold everything over. What a girl. Okay, we are not yet, it is not yet time. Things are being woven. So you're waiting on something here. That's why you've got the Knight of Pentacles. In our fa fast, loud, reactive, comparative world where an instant response is so ex often expected and at times even a currency, it can feel almost impossible to take a breath, let alone give ourselves the space to rest, wait and reset. We're so often in overdrive expecting instantaneous results over and over again and when guidance doesn't come at these extreme speeds, it can feel as though something's gone wrong. But often not receiving guidance is guidance in itself. When you ask for guidance and don't receive it, it can often mean wait, it's not time yet. The details are being woven. Our challenge is to keep trusting when on the surface it appears that nothing is happening. To remember that no matter how long or bitter the winter, spring does always come. To remember that you don't need to solve all of the world's problems in a single day and that perhaps they'd be better solved with some perspective and a good night's sleep. This card is your permission to slip, slow down, switch off and rest. You're being reminded to have patience and trust the mystery of life, to trust that things are being woven on your behalf. It may not be happening to the timeline you'd like, but if you gather up the patience, it will be orchestrated better than you can ever imagine. So about being patient here. Have a wonderful day.